Welcome back. We're back with uh, uh, with our guest uh, Joel Gr uh, Joel, and we're talking about uh, archaeology as a, 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 a part of the human condition is very important. We've been talking in the past uh, program with him about a lot of the background to his own uh, uh, growing up and so forth, and we're back to continue with that. And welcome back. It's good Thank to you. talk with you on the second program here. And we were talking. We got up talking about the human condition and so forth. And uh, what we didn't get a chance to do in that earlier part that we did is some of the actual uh, 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 digs and so forth digs. that you've been involved with. Right. Maybe you can share that. We were talking about your background yeah. and everything. And some of the actual work that you've been engaged in and, and bring it up in some detail sure. if you could. Sure. As an archaeologist. As an archaeologist, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was uh, very fortunate because early on I got a chance to direct projects. Yes, indeed. And some of those projects were large-scale projects. Okay, spell well, them out some. Well, could, yeah. they would have terms, yeah. 10, 15 people working yeah. in a crew. Yeah, that's a lot. In a crew for two to three months. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a an, lot of work. Uh, that's yeah. a lot of work. And yeah. when I worked in Peru, I was there for 18 months. That's a long time. Uh, yeah, well, I was there for a year and then two summers, so it was 12 plus 6. That was on an event that was going up toward Cusco. Right? That was yeah. near Cusco, but yeah. in Andahuaylas, north of Cusco, uh -huh. a day's travel north of Cusco. Okay. Uh, <coughs> my professor was this guy named John Rowe at University of California, Berkeley, oh, okay. who knew Carl Sawyer, uh, who we talked about yeah, last right. hour. Yeah. Um, and he said, okay, this is the story. I don't know if it's true. Yeah. He says, okay, Grossman, uh -huh. we haven't sent anybody into the Southern Andes in 15 years, yeah. 20 years. Right, right. It's been a war zone, a little, yeah. little, little yeah. dicey. Yeah. We haven't sent anybody there, but we got this guy, Grossman. He's yeah. not too bright. Yeah. We'll send him <laughs> in, drop him in. So right. they sent yeah. me into like this, Woody Allen. Yeah. Yeah, this right. unexplored area of Andahuaylas. Yeah. And uh, my professor had found us about 20 sites, archaeological sites, that he surveyed. Uh -huh. And I picked one on top of a mountain. Uh -huh. And I excavated, and we found 35 centuries in a layer cake. Wait a minute. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah you're talking about you after you completed the work. But you, you went there, and that's the, what, that's the one you're talking about. Well, my first... My uh, first visit to Peru was under a professor named Chris Donnan at UCLA. Okay. And he took me as a field assistant. Okay. And uh, we worked in the north desert of Peru. Okay, right, okay. And we recorded archaeological sites that were being disturbed by looters. There's a lot oh, yeah, of looting yeah, right. going on. You remember Paracas? Yes, that's Familiar south. With Paracas? Yes, that's to the south. I was in the north, but that yeah. was, that's in the south Peru. We, were, we, I, we drove my wife and I, uh -huh. in a 1956 Pontiac all the way to Bolivia from Detroit. Wow. That was, we have 200 flat tires, I think. <laughs> we were driving along the desert there in Peru, the and we came upon a burial site of Paracas. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, it was just there, it was just a empty desert along the ocean side, and we went, and it was just windblown, and the whole thing was uh, was shown with these absolutely gorgeous Paracas uh, mummies. They were wrapped in these gorgeous Paracas wow, robes. Wow. Right there, I mean, just on the side of the road. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the Paracas was just gorgeous. Uh, yeah. Textile. Well, they were the influence. They influenced the Wari Empire. You're talking talk Paracas. Paracas. Yeah, yeah. Paracas, that whole sector of the coast, Nazca and Paracas. Yeah, na near Nazca. And yeah. those designs were adopted by this later empire called Wari, yeah, the yeah. pre-Inca empire yeah. in the highlands of Peru. And you had to do with them, right? And I studied the origins of this Wari and pre-Inca empire. I see, and you'd be familiar with Paracas. And, yeah. Yeah, and and as a precursor. And then the event, the thing that you were doing the actual excavation on yeah. was up in the mountains. That, that was, at, Andes, yeah, that was at 11,000 feet. Yeah, that's up there, yeah. It's, uh, Cusco's 11,000 feet, and that yeah. was on top of this mountain yeah. and uh, the the air was thin yeah. and so <coughs> when a cloud went over uh -huh. the temperature would drop 30 sure. or 40 degrees yeah. 
So you had 40 degrees yeah, bitter? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. And uh, so the temperature varied and the rains varied. Yeah. It could come and go at any time. It was anyway, a challenging environment. We found yeah. uh, a series of five cultures superimposed on top of each other. Wow. Uh, the top, top one how, was... How, excuse me. How did you know where to... Dig. Well, I. I mean, how, what's the process by which you decide there's this dirt here, know. there's this dirt there? Where are we going to Good dig? Good question. And, Good and, question. And what was done precursor to your actually getting into the work of actually Bef digging? Before we excavate, we do what's called an archaeological survey. Thank you. What is that? Uh, for? Then if we I do may, for the future archaeologists. Yeah. So well, a, a survey is a, a generally a pedestrian survey. You yeah. walk across the ground. Yeah. And you have to locate where you are. Uh, all the time. Yeah. So it's different than just taking a walk. Yeah. You have to say, all right, I'm at uh, meter 1,000, yeah. I'm at meter 2,000, right, right. I'm at meter 4,000, right. so that somebody can reconstruct what right. you did. Exactly. The yeah. idea is not That's to yeah. do it so nobody can do it. Right. You want the people to be able to redo right. what you did. Absolutely. That's it doesn't right. matter what your theory is. Yeah. Uh -huh. Your theory doesn't matter. Okay. What matters is that the quality of your information, uh -huh. the quality of your data yeah. is so good uh -huh. that it's in so recorded so precisely yeah. that somebody down the road can say, I don't agree with you. I'm going to test it. But I don't agree with you, but your data is so good I can prove you wrong. Uh -huh. Oh, right. Okay, right. Fair enough. That that's sounds like part of the scientific process That's to me. the scientific process yeah, in uh -huh. archaeology. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. And that's the goal, to, have, to capture in 3D yeah. the elements of, of who lived there, when they lived there, how they lived there, and what were the characteristics? But what I was getting at, where you get to the site, yeah. and then you're going to you got you got a square footage here, and a square footage there, and a square footage over here. How do you know where? Well, what you I did, did, or is it a good thing? question? Is good there question. any sensors or anything you can use? Or any well, that's down the road. Okay. But at, in Peru, we yeah. didn't have that. Yeah. No. Right. So what I did. What is, year are we talking? About? Well, I was excavating in the seventies. Seventies. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, on and off in the seventies. Yeah. The war, the Sendero Red Army War. Mm -hmm. There was a war in the <coughs> Highlands, and that knocked all of us out of working in Peru. You had to leave. Yeah. Until two thousand and five. From when to when does you have to leave? I mean. Oh, from the late eighties up until two thousand and five. Oh. It was war is a bother, isn't it? Yeah, it is. People are trying to get some work done. Yeah, well, it was yeah. very serious in Peru. Yeah, right. lots of casualties. Yeah, right. A lot okay. of people Sorry. were killed. Yeah. yeah, so it became impossible. But right, that was right. later on. Yeah, that okay. was later on. Anyway, so uh, so uh, what, I, what I did with this mountaintop site yeah. is I laid a transect. Yeah, a transect across the top of the mountain. Okay, and every. 50 feet or so, yeah. we worked in meters, but yeah. every 50 feet or yeah. so, yeah. I put an exploratory test unit, one by two meters. What is an exploratory test meter? A I mean, test what do you unit. Mean? That test is unit. an excavation that unit that you know the lo you know where you're located. You got it marked on the on the map guide, on the ground, yeah. and you put stakes in the ground, yeah. and you demarcate it with a string, yeah. bright yeah. yellow yeah, right, string, right, right. and <coughs> And you give it a number. Okay. You give it a number. And what happens there? Do you dig? You start to excavate, and you excavate by natural layers. Okay. You're not doing zero to ten inches, ten to twenty inches, oh. ten to thirty You're inches. You're looking for layers of actual. You're actually evidence. looking for layers of different compaction uh -huh. and different color. Okay. And then you can begin to separate the layer cake out. Okay. If you dig by natural ar arbitrary levels, uh -huh. I'm going to dig in 10 inches, yeah. and every 10 inches I'll change the bag. Yeah. You could be mixing up two or three natural layers, yeah, right. and mixing up the pottery right. the, from that. So you don't want to do that. Okay. The ideal is to excavate as the layers were laid down uh -huh. in prehistory. Right. right. So this particular site had two meters or uh -huh. six feet. Uh -huh. Six feet 
of uh, of of prehistoric villages. Wow, a lot. Uh, a lot, and they were all compressed and yeah, and right. Yeah, as you and at the bottom there were fifteen human burials. Wow. And those were in a fetal position. Yeah, I saw. I got pictures of them. Oh, yeah. you saw yeah. them. Okay. Yeah, I've seen pictures. Yeah. yeah, they were in a fetal position, yeah. and they were crammed in very closely together. Uh huh. And were you able to get dating? Well, we did, yeah. and that became a big issue. But yeah. We we in the mouth of one of the burials, uh -huh. burial number four, yeah. a thirty-five-year-old man. Yeah. We can date. Uh, we can tell how old they are from the bones. You we can, can yes. without argon or something. Or no, just for, just how many years they lived. You can tell. We can phone. we can reconstruct. Okay, you have to be able to read that kind of you stuff. You have to be able to read that. Sense. That's one of the things we do. Okay, right. Okay. And um, yeah. anyway, this site became famous, and there's a plaque with my name on the top of it now. I'll be darned. Yeah, I, so uh, so I learned. Because the full it, name or just the last name? No, the full name, name, uh, full name. Because what we found was did, the did early. Did they have the PhD on there? Oh yeah, I'm sure. Okay, they good. Did. Okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure. You I haven't honors, seen it. I haven't all seen honors. it. I want all honors honors possible. <laughs> to come down and find it, sir. <laughs> haven't yeah. seen it. Mm. Anyway, yeah. um, that was important because we found very early evidence of gold working. Okay, yeah. And that uh -huh. dated to 1500 BC. My gosh, that's way back. Yeah, yeah way yeah, back, yeah. way before the Incas. Yeah, right, right. And the first evidence of the gold was a large blue bead, stone bead, uh -huh. in the mouth of this guy. Wow. And in the mouth, in the bead, was a two inch uh, chunk of gold foil. I'll be damned. Really? Wrapped up in the bead and stuffed, wrapped tight, uh, made, yeah. Yeah. bent, and stuffed into the bead, and then that was put in the mouth of the man. I'll be darned. So that was the first evidence. And it dated to when? 1500 BC. Wow. Wait. 35 yeah. centuries ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. <coughs> That discovery yeah. set off a lot of research. Now you were there how long? I was there twelve. That, that particular dig, I was there for twelve months. Twelve months, a long time. It's a long and time. And all the people that were in your crew was it thirty? Well, it was I had my girlfriend at the time oh, for well, about th yeah. three months. Yeah. Then she had to go back to school. Uh -huh. And then I had a former paratrooper uh -huh. and who was a mechanic, yeah. and I trained him to be my archaeological assistant. Okay, good. And he yeah. was a Quechua Indian, Quechua, yeah. Indian uh -huh. man, yeah. and he had been in the Army, mm -hmm. and he had gotten into some trouble. And they said, well, if you can get a job, we'll let you out, yeah. let you out of whatever they put him in. Yeah. And so I said, "Well, I'll give him a job, yeah. and oh. uh, and you train sprung him. him. You sprung I him. sprung him. Yeah. yeah, good for you. And uh, his name was Roque, and he was a Roque. Roque. Uh, Roque. And he was a wonderful guy, who learned to excavate the burials yeah. with a dental pick. I'll be damned. Right. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was so delicate. Yeah. yeah. And so we excavated these burials, and then we found two stones. Yeah. One on top of the other on right. the next to a burial. Is this down at the level of the uh, 1500 young man? BC? Yeah, 15, yeah, right. When this 35 year old guy was. Yeah, yeah. People died young in those days. They died early. My dad, or he was a lawyer, right? Uh huh. And he was buried, well, he was, bur he, he was buried on his 48th birthday. Yeah. And that was the average age for a male in the United States born in 1900, was 48. Yeah. There was no streptokinase or anything like right, that. Right. So 35 was pretty. Uh, that was a, he was senior, an adult. Almost. It was a, an adult. Yeah, right, right. He was an adult, and we can tell well, we because the teeth had rotted. The teeth had rotted out. Right. In at all 35? these, at all these burials, yeah, so a lot of people died from abscess right. infections in their jaw. They didn't have any penicillin. No, they didn't have. They didn't any. have streptokinase. They no, didn't have any of that. They didn't. I wouldn't have wanted to live back then. No. Well, let me tell you about the way we, yeah, we discovered. More, yeah. We discovered the early evidence of gold. Now there's yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. There's some dates the more recently. You said it was foil. It had been uh, gold made foil, it. hammered. It was, it was treated, yeah. But what we found yeah. was a gold worker's tool kit. 
Really? That's The valuable. actual tools and what sort used. Of thing, what did you there have? were two stone bowls. Yeah. And one was on top of the other. Right. I thought there were just two rocks, and yeah. I lifted the top rock off, and it was a bowl. I'll be damned. A stone bowl. Yeah. And inside the bottom one yeah. were an anvil shaped like a mushroom. I'll be damned. Of hard yeah. marble. Right. And then three cylindrical hammers. I'll be damned. Together with gold oh. in this toolkit. It that, was a gold worker's toolkit. Isn't that something? And that wow. dated the early evidence of gold working. We yeah, know it was. Now yeah. we. Then there was a bunch of scientists, as happens in science. Yeah, right. Papa said, oh, Grossman's full of hot air. Yeah, right. Huh? And it can't be that early. Yeah, right. They said. Yeah, it yeah. can't be that early. It has to be. A thousand years. Well, where did you get the fifteen hundred? From where radiocarbon dating. Radiocarbon, radiocarbon dating. dating. What's the what's the range on radiocarbon dating? Oh, I fifteen thousand, twenty thousand no, years. No, uh, what's the range that you can expect to have that be with the reality? I mean, uh, radiocarbon dating. I just don't know. You mean, if it, if you got a date of one thousand, is that good or is that cl if you fifteen hundred? Is it? Oh, it depends. It's situational. It depends on the w so what you're studying. So your dating of the of the find was accurate in your mind. At, at the time, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. Okay. Yeah. But we used old radiocarbon techniques. Oh, all right. That's And they gave you plus or minus fifty or a hundred or two hundred years. Yeah. So when you add well, the plus, 1500 if you're mm, within that range, it's still pretty good. Yeah, but plus yeah. some 1500 plus or minus 200 years yeah. takes you up to 1000 or back to 2000 BC. Okay. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it the fudge factor yeah. from these high standard deviations yeah, are yeah, called. Yeah, right, right, right. The statistical variation yeah. You have to deal it, with that in our Yeah, it makes yeah. the range mm -hmm. the entire period that you're studying. Okay, yeah. It doesn't give you a specific time period. Yeah, well, maybe it was the limitation of the system at the time. It was it's a been limit. improved now. Right? Well, now we have something called AMS, or Accelerator Mass Spectrometry. Wow, that's okay. okay. I've never heard of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And it works on a different principle than radiocarbon dating, okay. although it's radiocarbon. Yeah. But it uses different tools to get a level of radioactivity measured. Is it more accurate? It's more accurate. Down to the minute? It can, and instead of having a chunk, not the minutes, no, but I the years. No, I just mean facetious. But uh, instead of requiring several grams yeah, of yeah. charcoal, okay, which is yeah. hard to find yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, it will take a seed. Mm -hmm. We can date a seed. Wow. And I work with scientists at Lamont Dougherty at Columbia. Lamont, uh, yeah, wonderful. Guy. And uh, they have worked with me. Over where, in Jersey. Yeah, uh, well. Lamont Dougherty. No, they're, yeah, they're in Jersey. They're yeah, up in yeah. the Palisades. Yeah, he, he, the guy who put that together was a good friend of mine. Oh, really? That was Beth Lamont. Lamont. They, do, they do wonderful, Lamont Dougherty. wonderful work. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Anyway, so <clears throat> for a period of years, Ten years or so, I was attacked and criticized and saying, no, it couldn't be this early. It's only the gold and pottery is uh -huh. only 1,000 B.C., uh -huh. not 1,500 B.C. Yeah, you can't be that old. So right? I went were back. Were you trying to defend the 15 all the time? Or yeah, not? no, I believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So this last year, yeah, uh -huh. I Just took. now. This last yeah, year, probably, yeah, yeah, I took samples of charcoal that I had excavated in 1970. Uh -huh. And I dated that with a new high-resolution AMS dating yeah. accelerator mass spectrometer, 1600 BC. 1600. That'll teach him to. That'll teach him to question yeah. my data. <laughs> so that's been published. In fact, I sent you that article. I hope you wrote that to them in big letters. Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I wrote an article recently. Yeah. I, I'm working on three different articles right now, yeah. but I w wrote one. You that, write like an angel into them. Oh, I thank you. Let people know. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the website has my bibliography, yeah. and a lot of my work is online. You yeah. can just yeah. tap that link, 
and it brings up yeah. the article. Yeah, uh, your articles, you got so many there. Yeah. I think we could let people know about that and they yeah. do well to get to it. Yeah, because yeah. It ri it's so rich. Yeah. It's, a, it's in the a folder that says publications. Yeah. You go to the, you go to the website, yeah. Yeah. then you go to publications. That's a very rich website. You can get lost there, like the rabbit hole or something. Well, you know, it's but it's, intended it's just to a do good that. place to be lost in. Well, yeah. I, for I every was there major. I night until late hours. I, yeah. Every major project, I try to represent with at least one page on the website. Uh -huh. Well, I've been doing this for 45 years. It builds up, don't So it? I've got a yeah. lot of case studies. <laughs> right. A lot of, it uh, yeah, means I'm old, but it means I have a lot of experience. No, I don't think a you're so old. I think you're a pretty young uh, whippersnapper, really. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so, uh, so I found that was this major, yeah. Yeah, that was a big discovery. I and, bet, yeah. And that kind of made me notorious in the field because there was this controversy over how old the gold was uh -huh. and the pottery. So the new dates that we got this yeah. last year prove that it not only is 1500 B.C., 1600. it's 1600 B.C. Wow. And so, so what did all those naysayers have to say? Then? Well, they haven't seen the results all together yet, but they're going to see it probably this year. They'll just, yeah, yeah right. I think they ought to have I a listen, big... I, I mention who they are in the <laughs> <laughs> Nicely. I'm nice about it. I'm nice about it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That, that's very funny. Well, now, some of the other work. If oh, I mean. Some of the other work. Yeah, some of the exciting work. stuff that I've <laughs> done. I um, mean, I set up an expedition. It wasn't my project, but I set up using my scientists. I had a team of scientists with advanced technology, uh -huh. machines that can see underground. Yeah and wow. uh, the yeah. radar and magnetometers and other instruments. That stuff's coming along pretty... Well, it's been around for the, since the 30s. But, yeah. Okay. But it's being refined. Yeah, it's be it, it's we're, better. we're advancing in our ability to have... It's, it's cheaper and it's easier. Uh -huh. That's a good combo. Yeah. Cheaper and easier. Yeah. And it, where you used to use science and then you'd get one solution here and another solution here, yeah. another solution here, uh -huh. and then borrow from engineering. Yeah. Now they're developing systems that are all integrated. Okay. So all those things you used to have to do is separate tasks. They used to have an ad for Alka-Seltzer, a combination of active ingredients. Right. Do you remember that for Alka-Seltzer? Yeah. I give Alka-Seltzer a plug. Yeah. But it's com it, it's systems thinking. Uh, yeah. And systems engineering. Right. And so uh, I, this was a project in the Amazon where uh -huh. we were in the Amazon. We we mapped with advanced mapping systems. Some of the more exciting work I've done uh, has to do with the historic period under Manhattan. Mm. Yes. And we excavated. That, yeah. We excavated and found. <laughs> <clears throat> under 12 feet of rubble mm -hmm. in lower Manhattan uh, uh, near the shoreline, the original shoreline at Pearl Street. Pearl Street, okay. Uh, Pearl and Whitehall, uh -huh. which is now the New York Stock Exchange okay. Exchange Building. Okay. Uh, so there was a lot of pressure on that project. The Stock Exchange, you were up against the Stock Exchange? Uh, yeah. You had a de desire to get a new building built? They, they wanted a new building built, yeah. And you were uh, coming along talking Well, about it wasn't me. It was Landmarks Preservation Commission said that they had to do archaeology. If it had only been you, it probably wouldn't have counted. But with well, the Landmark, no, I wouldn't they had, had to pay attention. I had no voice. They would have had some private, a uh, public sector uh, thing to get you some, uh, some you know, a, 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 a ticket to work. Or, or in a no, situation where you're able to work. I mean, if there wasn't a law that That's mandated... That's what I'm saying, from the private public sector. The laws the, and the people... And the, from public sector, not from the private sector. It's now, the, the public sector gives you the ability to get some work done. Yes. In the interest of something other than the bottom line. Yes. Which motivates most of human... No, most of corporate society. You and, think uh, that most developers activity. are against archaeology. That's not true. Not true. Okay, not that's true. interesting. That's They're interesting. Uh, the smart ones. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. The smart guys know yeah. and gals know yeah. that if you do it right, yeah. you get wonderful public relations. That's true. There is, that's worth a lot. Yeah. You get credit for a major discovery. Right. And you look good. Okay. Makes all of which is part of PR. It's all it's public, called public relations. Absolutely. That's important all over the, across the board, isn't and it? And that's anymore? true in archaeology. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. I deal with developers at a high level yeah. and agencies at a high level. Right. 
where it is very clear that if you do it right, yeah. if you do it up front and you don't delay, uh -huh. but start early yeah. and do it before the machines are ready to roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I until always, the investment's been made, maybe. Well, I always say I'm out before the ink dries. You're about before the ink dries. I'm, bef I'm out. You're done before the ink before dries on their, their on their blueprints. Yeah, right, on their blueprints. Uh, on their so blueprints. Oh, that's, that's. I will work in the winter time yeah, uh, un done. under blizzard conditions, under shelters, uh -huh. to get it done before. before a scheduled start date. Okay. So a lot of my projects. And when you get it done, then do they get a go ahead then? Once then it's they been get done? a clearance to a go clearance ahead. Clearance to go ahead. When I say Have I'm you finished. Have been able to make it so that they were held up really unconscionably long with no, their thing? No. No. My job is to get them back to work. Get them back to work. My what job. What about preserving something that's going to be uh, made not preservable? Well, by the building of a great big building. Or yeah. Something. Well, the With building wins. Generally, the w building wins and the resource loses. Very well, seldom do is they. Is there a lesson in that? I wonder about the uh, human. Well, very seldom. Yeah. Harold, do archaeological discoveries in urban settings, like in London or in New York stop a project completely. What they do is they precipitate intense archaeological work for a month or three months at the most. What about forward planning? Does it, is it's there part any of forward planning. In the, in the pl planning phase Absolutely. Of things, if you're smart. Is there room for archaeological Absolutely. Yeah. Just like there's room for air quality studies. Yeah. Uh -huh. All this stuff has to be done before the building is even a concept. Even, yeah, okay, right. Design concept. Uh -huh. You have to address uh -huh. traffic conditions, human pedestrian right. routes, right. clean air regulations, water regulations. That's, it, that's called what Bucky Fuller would call anticipatory design science. Absolutely. That should be built into it before you even begin to it get is. the blueprints. It is. In, co in concept. They have to have a blueprint ready for us uh -huh. to find out where we have to excavate. Uh -huh. We have to know what the footprint of that project is going to be. Fair enough, yeah. So anyway, in lower Manhattan, I went to Mr. Amoruso, who was one of our big contractors in New York. Uh -huh. And he had backhoes and bulldozers and dump trucks. Already parked. He ready was to a go. tough old gentleman. Yeah, right. And I went to him. I said, Mr. Amor Amoruso, yeah. I need your help. Uh -huh. okay. I have to take out a city block in a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, and it's got 10 to 12 feet of rubble in a city block. Can you, crews, clean that out down so to the basement floor yeah. of the 19th century row houses that used to be there? Wait a minute. Now, you're presenting this to the guy? Uh, I'm so Had he considered that as part no, of the No, no. I hired him. He no. didn't consider anything. He just did what I say. I hired he the contractor. He did it in his own interest? Did no. He, was he able to see it in his own interest? It was interest a contract. He was paid... Thousands oh, of dollars. Oh, it was a contract separate from the overall writing contract for the big project. Right. It oh, was okay. part of my contract. Okay. Oh, it's part of your contract. Yeah. I see. Okay. And we had we had engineers. We had uh -huh. logistics people. Anyway, so Mr. Amaru, I, I said, Mr. Amaruso, can you help me? Yeah. I'm nobody. I'm from California. Yeah. You did. You gave that. To, you gave that uh, line to him. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. He says, you know something, boy, yeah. I like you. <laughs> and he was a tough guy. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and he brought out uh -huh. the most fantastic collection of heavy machines, uh -huh. bulldozers and backhoes and b machines with jackhammers yeah. to break cement walls and through yeah. foundations. And you knew from what? From, uh, from there had been a, a X-rays, or how did you know that those two things. things were there? And how it's do you have the? How can you read under the ground of what's there? Two things: historic, historic maps. Yeah. Tell us something. Yeah. Uh -huh. And yeah. the other is uh, previous work, or they previous maps or previous previous designs? excavations. Yeah. In Manhattan. Yeah five years before had shown that there was 17th century material uh -huh. underground. Uh -huh. 
So I knew that down below uh -huh. the 19th century basements, right. below the 19th yeah, century right, basements, right, right, huh? there was the possibility of 17th century remains. And did that come from designs from the 17th century itself, or from design, or, or it came writings, from, or It came from legal records. Legal records. Referring right. to construction in the now 17th century. Now, who's putting all of this together I in am. an urban environment like... Um, I am, I am. I do the archival research, yeah. and I do the history. Boy, that really is quite a, that's quite a, a job, yeah, putting that is. together. So is it, you're uh, like a Sherlock Holmes. It's, it's Sherlock Holmes, absolutely. With no Watson. No Watson. No. Although I had a lot of good assistants. No, I had a lot, lot of Watsonists. I had a lot of wonderful people working Watsons. for me. Watsons. Uh, anyway, yeah. so yeah. we took out all of this rubble. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. And then we built shelters because it was the winter time. Yeah, it's right, yeah. We took big greenhouse shelters and we made double skins of plastic yeah. and filled it with air. It wasn't geodesic, was it? No, it was, oh, a, no, it was just an old greenhouse. Okay, yeah. Well, Heavy-duty you know, greenhouses. Yeah, but a greenhouse can be geodesic. Yeah, I can. Like but fuller, I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, no, these were just simple oh, yeah, right, okay, okay. hemispheres, half, yeah. half, half spheres. And we covered the buried site yeah. in these shelters and then went underground uh -huh. in the wintertime uh -huh. and excavated throughout the winter. To where you were getting at. And where now, we you get were getting, doing, getting understanding of that situation from the past in the interest of what? The developer yeah. building the building. Now, what, what was being proposed by somebody for that a, piece a, of real An estate? annex of the stock exchange. An, an, a big building. A big building. Yeah, yeah. It's a big building. You can yeah. see it on Google Earth. Yeah, okay. It's a yeah. bigger Google indie. Earth is something else, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I Where use did it. that come from, man? That's, it's something else. Yeah, yeah anyway, well, that's another issue. Let's us. Let's yeah. just see archaeological sites on the ground. Uh huh. Yeah. We can actually see them. Yeah, right, right. Buildings. Right. Anyway, in answer to your question, yeah. I knew that five years before some archaeological stuff had been discovered yeah. a block or two away. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I used that, uh -huh. and I used the fact that the sea level had risen uh -huh. from the 17th century. Well, you're doing a lot of systems thinking. Yeah. You're bringing in climatology or, or, or the tidal interest and uh, sources of information. Yeah. It's like of, systems thinking. Yeah, it's just a, it's diverse. Uh, the diverse diversity, stuff. yeah. So I... Um, and against you, was it, what was the attitude of the people that had an interest in getting that? Uh, no, they extended? hired me. The no, developer no, the hired me. No, no. Uh, the, the people who want to put up the extension of the stock exchange or whatever, mm -hmm. they're a big building they wanted to put up. Yeah. Were they being bothered by you bringing up all this nonsense about what happened? No, I'll history? tell you a story or about how that. How do you deal with that tension of them wanting to get the project that's going to make a lot of money, yeah. and they don't care about what happened to some old Indian old boy back then well, or something. Well, they do. In, yeah. in lower Manhattan, do they, they care. I mean, do they do it because they have to? Because they, of certain they, they have private, to. public sector uh, laws. Uh, laws that Landmark. require them to, or do yeah. they do it no. uh, wholeheartedly? No, they do it wholeheartedly because they're, they have to do it. They do it, whole, well, that's not really wholehearted. They can't get their permit to excavate and construct. So they do it under constraint under of the law. Under the law. Okay. Yeah. And do they try to get around the law and stuff? Not lawyers very often. Lawyers often try to get around the, the law. The lawyers try it, but they don't win. Uh, they do not. We, be, we beat the lawyers most well, of the time. Well, now, the we being people who are interested in the larger issues of the society other than just the profit. Well, I'd say the environment. Profit's a very big driving force in oh, our sure. society. Oh, you know? sure. I mean, I, I keep down to the practical level. Uh -huh. uh, Good for you. And you I, follow the law. I follow and the law. And the law and the attitude of our... Pro I keep saying public sector. I mean, that'd be governmental at all uh -huh. levels and so forth. Yeah. That, that the things that are preserving things in a way that has some conscience, if that's the right expression, or some aesthetic or yeah. something, is, be is growing to the benefit of the people who have an archaeological take We like are, do. because of what they... You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. some hope in that. Yeah, the w because of the Planning, I guess. discoveries in London. Yeah, in London. When no. in London, yeah. after the war, yeah. they would dig down deep to get the unexploded ordnance. Yeah, right, it was horrible. And they went down yeah. and they started finding Roman tiles yeah. and mosaics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that told us that even under a densely rebuilt mm. urban environment, yeah. we can find preserved 
prehistoric Yeah, but what do remains. we do with the prehistoric area other than bury it with another big, uh, ugly building? Well, no, you document it and uh, record it uh, before they construct. Okay. That's what I did in Lower Manhattan. Can we preserve it and then build? Uh, no. You can't. No. We can't, we can't have these our are cake. buildings. We can't have our cake and eat it too. No, these are buildings cake. underground. Yeah, I know. So we cleared out what I it's did. It's a question. Can we have our history and eat it too? Or yeah, I, I, I think can so. Can we have our history in the future also? Yeah, I, I strongly the believe two, we the can. Two, bringing the two together is an and the way we can do it to understanding the best way for us to go collect The way we can do it is yeah. to use technology yes. to make archaeology faster and more more precise. Okay, and everything else. Maybe. That's what I do, is I bring in technology that makes things work faster and record easier. Okay, is that true of the whole process? The whole process is based on in incorporating... I mean, outside of the archaeology. No. Archaeology is one part of it, no. but the, the, I'm, what I'm saying is the operation of the whole system could be acting with, with the same ethos that you're manifesting could become characteristic of the overall ethos by which the capital formation and the capital development and everything is Yeah, done. that's out of my it, hands. That's I know, a, but I'm yeah. just saying you you but you're you're encouraging it to go in a certain kind of way. I say it. what I'm doing is you're, arguing that we can do yeah. a job before your ink is dry. Yeah. Okay. We can do the yeah. highest standards of science. Yeah. Uh -huh. The highest quality of science. Uh -huh in restricted time frames uh -huh. under adverse conditions yeah. and come out with a jewel uh -huh. of a finding. Okay. Good. So well, for this site yeah. down in lower Manhattan is uh, yeah. very important Yeah, right. because yeah. it made it very clear the landmarks that there's stuff preserved. Uh, yeah. okay. So what I did was I tracked sea level rise mm -hmm. and I said by the time they built the 19th century buildings with the basements, yeah. the sea level had risen above the 17th century layers. I'll be damned. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because how did I know that? How did because you? Because know? the basements had four layers of brick on them and drains built into the basements. Oh, I see. Yeah. They had a water table problem. Uh huh. So uh -huh. I used that as a clue, uh -huh. the saying, "All right, I think that the 17th century is preserved below." the 19th century basements. And you were able to prove that? I was able to prove it. Oh. So what I did is I worked with Mr. Amoruso and we yeah. had machines with huge jackhammers yeah, you on said, the back yeah. on them. Yeah, right. And we bulldozed and, and broke up all of the brick basements. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Yeah. We did that and it they would have to do it when they constructed the building anyway. Okay. So, it, so that it, served their interest. It was yeah. in their interest the, to do the, that. Yeah. It just it was under archaeological supervision. Mm -hmm. So my theory about the water table coming up yeah. and stopping yeah. uh, uh, above the basement floors yeah. proved to be true. Mm -hmm. And I took the rubble out and mm -hmm. I took the basements out mm -hmm. and then we started hitting yellow brick walls. Yellow brick road? The, yellow the walls. Brick walls. Yellow Bricks, the Dutch there imported... There was a song, Yellow Brick Wall, Road. Road, that was... A, that was a Beatles song. No, well, yeah. Couldn't you use that to some advantage for the PR piece? No, I don't think... Yellow we. Brick Roads? No? I, yeah. I was just thinking. That's yeah, a, well, this was... Uh, trying to get a little... We found, we found the cobble floor of the first warehouse in North America. Wow. And we found a yellow brick building uh -huh. of the first secretary, we think, mm -hmm. of New Amsterdam. I'll be damned. And 40,000... It's some Dutch name, right? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Van, Van Tienhoven. And they're all Vans. Van Tienhoven, yeah. yes. Yeah. And uh, 40,000 Dutch artifacts. Wow. And Indian, Native American mm -hmm. artifacts. What were the Indian peoples here? Then? Well, Did that was block. Was no, yeah, that really? block, they were the Muncie Indians. Muncie. All right. They Sounds like Indiana. No, Muncie. It was a, tr a group. Okay. Yeah, Indiana. they were. Uh, well, they were the Delaware. And you know, we. The problem is yes. that we can't. We can't identify the prehistoric people yeah. from the modern language groups. Yeah. The Europeans came and said, "Okay, you're an Iroquois. Yeah. You're a Huron. Yeah. You're this. 
is that they had no idea about the social structure of the Native American society. I know Benjamin Franklin learned a lot from the two, he two did. row wampum of the Iroquois. He did. And a lot of what is called democracy in our uh, compounding documents Absolutely. comes from the Iroquois. That's, I that's, don't think it's recognized. All we did is just uh, rape their stuff. You know, uh, steal well, it we, we intelligently adopted it. Well, <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I think there's a lot of uh, karma there in terms yeah. of our treatment of the American Indian Oh, people. yeah, that's yeah. a whole... Topic. But that's a huge problem. That's a problem of the whole historical development. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, that's really something that you found all that. Down yeah. There. Well, that was that proved that there was prehistoric and historic under modern Manhattan. Right. Right. So in the future, it means that every time they want to build a beige or building yeah. in this area where the Dutch West India Company was. Uh -huh. South of Wall Street to Pearl Street, right, right, yeah, Wall to area. Pearl, yeah, yeah, is all the Dutch West India Company uh -huh. underground. So that would be feet your down. work. They would repair to anybody who wants to do anything down there would want to repair, and have in their portfolio of understanding your work. That would be referred to. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be something that they could learn. They from. would refer to that. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah that's called the congratulations. Broad, thank on that you. The work. Broad Street. That was a major piece of work. That was it? a major find. It was yeah. one of the first deep urban winter excavations uh -huh. that were ever conducted. Do you in have Manhattan. fellow colleagues in the arche in the archaeological community like yourselves that you can relate to as friends and fellow travelers and fellow whatever you call it mm -hmm. who see things archaeologically in terms of our society? Oh the yes, way you I have. Do? A is there a, is there a, a, a coterie of them? Are there some archaeologists who are just totally in the pocket of the big money people, or are there people who have some of these other values that motivate them to understand other than just the bottom line? I wouldn't say people are in the pocket of the developer. I, no, I, there are some are. Yeah, some are, I guess. But what I see is a real difference in the quality of the work that is done by different people. Well, are you talking now in the archaeological world? In the world? archaeological in world. The archaeologi that's one part, but then the, that archaeological part is nested within a broader operation of a whole society. Yeah, but I good. can't go there. I mean, I can deal... But you, you have people, and the people that are archaeological are, in a certain sense, bringing an ethos that ought to be understood, and it, it carries a little bit of a... Well, you can't generalize. Them. You can't no, generalize... You can't. Well, I'm the, I guess I'm trying. Yeah, maybe. you're trying to yeah. generalize for archaeology. And there are small numbers of people, for example, who have worked with Native Americans yeah. and adopt, instead of forcing the Native American to adopt to the science... Yeah accept the science. Mm. We're going to dig your bones up and we're going to take them to the museum and keep them there for 10 years. Mm. And then we may or may not give them back to you because they're scientific specimens. Oh, I see. Well, what did they do with that to your mom or your dad, your remains of your parents? You would feel very, very sensitive about it. Yeah, I think we're talking on different terms here. I'm trying to get a good word in for the good archaeologists being on the side of the good guys yeah. who are trying to bring a more ethical society and one that's more attuned there to are an understanding of something other than the bottom line mo money. Yeah. yeah. There are very courageous, very impressive archaeologists working to do right by Or the even design scientists. Design scientist. Like my hero, Bucky Fuller. He yeah. was a major person who had some ideas about uh, the built environment. And yes, so forth. yes, he did. And, and there are people of vision that have something to say other than just strictly uh, economic criteria of, uh, of profit margin. Right. That motivates so much of what goes on, isn't it? Yeah, Don't well, it does. But the, 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 ro the job of science is to capture the information before it's lost. He used to use the term uh, anticipatory design science. Yes. Anticipatory of uh, the situation that's going to be done. And then and then he, he started out, he had a major thing, uh, design science decade 1965 to 75. You ought to go to it. It's on my site. You can go click. It's a thing. And they had these people, and it was just, they, they, they were taking a, 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 an understanding of the earth resources and what's the capability and all the ca capabilities and everything in a systemic, in a systematic systemic way. way yeah. And 
modern society doesn't seem to bother to try and do that anymore. What is the overarching reality within which the human condition is evolving? They don't begin to have an idea of what the overall context is because they're all specialized out. Yeah, I can't address that. I don't. I mean, I'm. No, but the archaeological community with a conscience. It, yes, it, there it, are. There I, I are. Mean, I can see an ethic in what you're doing. There's there's an ethical component, and there's and an a artistic lot. artistic component. There's a lot of ethical archaeologists yeah, out there. Yeah. Yeah. There are unethical, are like there, in there, any, there any are, field. There, yeah. Uh, that don't want to represent the interests of the Native Americans yeah. or, or are in anything other than where the money is. No, I mean, that's, a, that's an extreme maybe example. Over, maybe I'm over extreme yeah, in my in Yeah, my, uh, I mean, there are, um, there are individuals who are on record for doing things uh, in favor of the developer, or saying that there's no archaeology or saying that the site is not important mouthpieces for that. Yeah, well that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about evidence and finding the data necessary to make a case yeah. to make the evidence strong. Yeah. So, But it does bring you in competition with some people who've got a project they want done by tomorrow where they're going to make them a lot of money from and they don't want to hear about anything else out writing like a bunch of old Indians. That's like true, but yeah. in my case I dealt mostly with the federal government. Okay, and that's where we have some respite, perhaps. We have some control. That's, I keep saying the, the private. The Wait, we sector. had up until now. Now, yeah. what's happening now is yeah, what that is happening? the new red administration is mm -hmm. going after those regulations, mm -hmm. those yeah. preservation laws. Yeah, yeah, they'll tear them apart. They're 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 doing it. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're taking the money away from agencies that. Regulatory agencies Regulatory. to get in the way of the entrepreneurial spirit where they can make money. That's what's happening. Well, that's the the overriding interest in terms of what's motivated the human condition and so forth has to a large degree, I don't know, there's other things and everything, but the um, return on investment and the making of money seems to have become the overriding ethos by which decisions are being made by the modern society. It's money that counts more than anything else. No. And the places where other things can be entered into it, intellectually or otherwise, right. seem to be drying up, at least in the modern immediate success uh, political context in which we are operating. Yeah, I assume that there are good guys out there, all right? And, wow. that, and in the, even in the development community, okay. even in agencies that are building roads and right. have very clear mandates to build yeah. highways or yeah. whatever else. Yeah. There is the understanding that if they do it up front, uh -huh. that they plan for archaeological work in the earliest possible stages. Mm -hmm. It can be incorporated. It, it's incorporated like yeah. doing a water study okay, yeah. or doing a, a habitat study right, right. or what animals live in the area yeah, right. or what endangered species. See, you're getting towards systems thinking. Yes. Yeah, systems thinking I think is called for more than it is now. It's a, they're getting divide and conquer is the way the old guys used to run things. Well, now, now things are very serious because they're going after the protectors. Yeah. The the yeah. new administration is going after anybody that believes in global warming. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's really they've, something. Yeah. They've been fired or they've been yeah. demoted or they've been and they can't they've destroyed a thousand websites that the government had. Mm -hmm. I I think I'm underestimating it. Yeah. Over a thousand websites that had anything to do with the environment yeah. by the EPA, yeah. the Army Corps. Yeah. Department of Interior. Yeah, it's all, it's all gets in the way of the entrepreneurial spirit of let's build. Well, that's you know? the new administration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it may be passing. It may be a passing phase. Uh, a lot yeah. of damage is being done. Yeah, I know that. I realize that. A lot of damage to our ability to protect our own resources, mm -hmm. to even study our own resources. Yeah. Because if these laws are done away with, mm -hmm. they're going to just bulldoze stuff without doing justice yeah, to Yeah, right. I, I, one wonders, because it's right, in, it's, it's the stuff of the news now and everything, with our new president and everything. Well, that's and what I'm really talking about. It's really a menace, yeah, yeah in the minds of practically and everybody. And it's affecting colleagues of mine. Yeah. It's affecting scientists yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. who are not getting funds, who are being denied. I have, I work with scientists that are connected with NASA. Yeah. yeah. They are being 
told not to do environmental studies yeah. or, or greenhouse studies yeah. or climate change studies. Yeah, yeah. Now imagine the main people in our country yeah. who are specialized in that yeah. are being muscled. Well, I, I, th I think there's a reaction coming now. I see now. I saw Mr. Gore. Yeah, or, well, or, there's or, a reaction. Yeah, the yeah, idea it's is... really strong, you know. Yeah, you hope it is. Yeah, yeah. You hope it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there has to be a, a, a profound political change in this country there after may this. Be very short, a short. Uh, well, I hope so. Impeachment's in the air. Yes, I hear that. It is. I, right, I right. understand that, but the, in the meantime, the people that they put in place mm -hmm. to destroy the EPA. Yeah, yeah. And, just, and and all the other things. And the other agencies mm -hmm. are being very effective. Yeah. Pruitt at the EPA mm -hmm. was the guy who sued the EPA mm -hmm. for 20 years mm -hmm. to block EPA's le uh, regulations. Mm -hmm. He's now the director of the EPA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Well, That's what's going on yeah. in this country. And the money mm -hmm. that we had allocated mm -hmm. for the study of science yeah. is being cut back yeah. or being kept to level and inflation takes off, and we lose 20, 30 percent of the dollar value. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what it's going to be done. But anyway, one of the things really interesting is the the role of the. Well, you're part of an intellectual community that has a, 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 a contribution to the development of human society, and there's a broader responsibility from the architectural community. Buckminster Fuller thought of himself as a as an architect. Mm -hmm. He had the geodesic dome, most the most efficient way to enclose space was yes. geodesic, and all of those right. things could be recorded. And that great thing they did up in Montreal, where they had the uh, dome mm -hmm. and some of the geodesic or the principles of uh, of understanding the uh, the environment uh, from a from a comprehensive construction. I think is something that we need to have. We don't have a real good understanding, a comprehensive systems understanding of what the planet needs, it would seem. We need to have something coming from another quarter. That's the role of archaeology. That's yeah. one of the jobs of archaeology and environmental science. Well, archaeology is part of a broader coterie of intellectual yes. criticism of some of the principles that seem to be driving us into wars and what kind of stuff the negative things that we can see in the world. Hopefully. We need an operating manual for Spaceship Earth that we don't have. A right. collective understanding would come from the intellectual community, like archaeologists and others. And I think it's something that's... Bl Bobby Dylan wrote a song, Blowing in the Wind. Something's blowing in the wind. Right. And it was a time of qualitative promise. And uh, I think that's something that your archaeological work has been contributing to and so forth. Yeah. And that's the promise of the, the danger of what the, 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 the inherent in the current uh, political situation in the world. Yeah. I, um, I work now with uh, a Native American group. Yeah, by all means. Me I too. Work, yeah. I, I work with them. And uh, mm -hmm. one group, I won't name who they were, contacted me recently. And they uh, have their own preservation office now. Yeah, good. Yeah. And their preservation officer. Mm -hmm. So that they can protect their own cultural heritage. Uh -huh. And uh, burial grounds and archaeological sites. And uh, they contacted me and said, would you advise us mm -hmm. on how to maintain the standards of review mm -hmm. to the highest levels? Uh, a standard review of what? Of, the, of archaeological studies Archeolog that, they are, that they're evaluating. Okay, yeah. Let's say somebody does a study yeah. and it's inadequate. Yeah. Somebody has to say that study is inadequate. Or is wrong? How about so, some study that's it's wrong? It's just wrong. If somebody's coming forth with some sort of a baloney or guys report a study that does serve some economic interest, but is not in keeping with the best thinking of our right. intellectual community, right. uh, there's going to be. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm glad there, you've got that coming from some of the yeah. Native American people. So I, here. I, it's a positive uh, development. Uh huh. That people are taking it onto themselves uh -huh. instead of depending on the academic or the outside scientist, mm -hmm. they're trying to 
control and protect their own resources. Yeah, well. I'm very in favor of that. Okay, that's a good anything. idea. Anything. Yeah. Now, I'm notorious for using advanced technology, applied technology. <laughs> no, good for you. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, in archaeology, mm -hmm. to make things faster and more precise. Uh huh. Well. Okay, so we use different kinds of technology to yeah. discover the archaeological site. To, to understand the, the truth. Well, to discover, actually discover archaeological sites. But you work sites. with others in a systems way. There are other people of good conscience are thinking. You get systems thinking of people that are on the side Very of much what so. makes sense. Yes, because much so. there isn't a countervailing force to the political process that it seems to be inadequate as a model that is called for to avoid some sort of awful calamity, uh, even along the lines of an unleashing of the weapons of mass destruction, even as we have the ability to take care of the planet in a way that has incredible capability for improving the human condition within an ecological order, which is the promise of the moment in which we arrive. Mm -hmm. So there's a responsibility for all citizens to be interested in that, uh, uh, that situation that's developing in the time in which we find ourselves. Hopefully. Don't you Hopefully, think? Yes. yeah. It's a hell of a time to. It's a great time to be born in a certain sense, but it's also very challenging. It's a very challenging time. I, I'm, I'm worried about our grandchildren and our children, and I worry about their ability to rectify some of the mistakes we've made now. And yeah, but let's not be only mistakes. Let's draw upon some of the sources of uh, understanding. Uh, that would include a lot of your work, if I may suggest, and your colleagues in other fields, and seeing it in a, because it's like you're involving a lot of things within archaeology in a system way, then archaeology is part of understanding environmentally and other kinds of understandings to work. We'll get an operating manual for Spaceship Earth that makes sense. We're trying. Rather than those all history-bound, outdated institutions. What I try to do is integrate different disciplines. Yeah, well, systems to thinking, maybe. Yeah, to bring different disciplines together. That's just needed, I think. Yeah. yeah, and to benefit from the insights of others. Yeah. Not just look at archaeology, but look at what the engineering community has thank to you, offer. Thank you, thank you. That's exactly look synergies, the, the behavior of systems unpredicted by the sum of its parts. Absolutely. It's something resonatingly more than the sum of the parts of a maximally engaged community. That's what we've got to get on the planet Earth so that we'll have a, a new relationship in the universe, perhaps, because we're coming to a major part period of qualitative transformation. Yeah. Huh? I agree, yeah. I think the architects have a great hand in helping to put that together. Yeah. So I, I work with architects all the time. Yeah, well, yeah you do work <laughs> with architects and also fellow people of a similar mentality. Yeah, I do. I are, have a, are to be d drawn upon. Yeah. Yes, uh, I have a wonderful network of, of colleagues. I bet you do. In yeah. in yeah. different sciences and in archaeology. Yeah. And what I do is a team effort. Okay. What I do it requires a group of 15 or 20 people working together from different disciplines. Okay, and I'd like to be part of that uh, 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 part out here, a group. I'd like to be in touch with you, if you okay. don't mind. That would okay, that would be... I, I thank you very much for such a very well-read life that continues, and I thank you for viewing. Your pleasure to have the perception of a major archaeologist and one that we've been happy to talk with, and Joel Grossman. Thank you very, very much for all that good work. And uh, sorry we're running out of time, but... Uh, Thank you very much for coming in. We've My been pleasure. Great pleasure talking with you. Likewise. Please tune in. We'll be coming back again tomorrow. That's it for now. Thanks very much. And we're out. That's 58. 58. Yeah. Good. <laughs>